Have you ever wondered why human beings feel connected with the environment? We feel there is a connection that we've been, been there before. But the reality is that it's something more sophisticated in how this will be explained. It's called genetics. The study of genetics allows us to understand the connections that exist between the different species and ourselves. And it's genetic what actually allows us to understand how can we be in this world and the universe connected together. DNA is the common thread between the species. And the fact that this happened is because it's the nature of our nature. So when you go deeper to understand how you are and how the universe is, the most important and more amazing thing is that we are all following a, a common thread, a single line. This single line is actually appearing in every species. So we are part of nature. We are part of the universe. And we are connected in that particular level. The most important aspect also is there is a pattern. These patterns that nature creates exist between us. And it's actually in any level. But these patterns are created also in our mind. So we actually normally look at this constantly. And we use them, even, we, if, even if we don't know that we are using them. Patterns are actually a very important thing. But the element and the aspect to take this out is actually through curiosity. So curiosity allows us to understand that we are connected, that we are part of this world, and that actually there is a constant thread and constant flow. So if we use curiosity as an element to understand nature and how to actually define and deliver new things, there are several examples that actually I will go through that will explain that that happened. So imagine goose grass. This is a seed that grows in the Alps and the mountains. It has the capability to attach to animals in the fur. The nature of this seed is actually to grow in different geography by adapting and attaching into animals. Its form is probably an um, inch millimeter, an uh, inch uh, diameter in, uh, in size, 250 hooks around. But the capability of this seed is that the strong and very, very sophisticated way in how attach was once discovered in 1940 by a scientist called George de Mastral. He was walking with his dog in the Alps, and he saw this seed, and he discovered one of the most amazing attachments called Velcro, which probably all of us are using. So Velcro is actually one of the most interesting examples in how with this commonality of facts, we know that we are part of nature. So the most amazing part of how this works is that he was also capable to move these into manufacturing, in production. It's a simple way to observe, analyze, and implement, and then resolve a big problem for the benefit of all of us. So what happened is that we get exposed to this type of knowledge constantly. So in my back, we have actually the idea that this is a tree and a branch with leaves, but in reality, it is an animal, it's a chameleon. And so what happens is our brain plays this game of fueling and putting all this type of information in our head, and we have the capability to use it in a proper way. So let's return back to the concept I was trying to describe. So this pattern, this process, was actually analyzed in a very detailed way by a mathematician called Leonardo Fibonacci. Fibonacci actually uh, discovered a process in how plants and animals have the capability to grow exponentially. And it's actually a principle that applies anywhere in our bodies, in the environments, in the plants, and even in the galaxies. So this principle is a principle that drives us, that is within us. So how can we take this knowledge and move it out? So the process of doing this is analyzing how nature that is in front of us can help us to improve our world. So when that happens in your brain, 
you actually realize that, boom, you got an idea that comes from your surrounding. It doesn't come from you. So this concept of invention is not real. It's discovery. So we are prone to observe. We are prone to discover, analyze, and implement. So I'm going to show a few other examples of things that we know and we use normally, but we're actually using that process. Let's talk about one of the most amazing discoverers that I actually admire, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo did something that I believe was the most fascinating way to use this type of knowledge. He went deeper into understanding how it works. So the question that he has is how animals, how the body works. In his studies of the Atlantic code, he showed deep knowledge understanding in how the human body, the hands, and the bones structure is connected. He used that knowledge later to his master paints. But most important, he influenced during the Renaissance several other artists to look inside and understand and express the nature of our nature. Leonardo has also the capability to move from place to place from animals to plants, and actually going always deeper understanding this principle. In this picture, you can see one of the most amazing descriptions of engineering air machines inspired by a bad wind. And so this, again, happened in the 1100s. Most of his ideas at the time were encouraged by use because technology weren't there. But still today, Leonardo's influence in designs is actually visible and visual in many of the new flying machines. So how does this happen? So we have this process of discovery. We have the process of interpretation and then implementation. But the most important is that all of this is actually around us. And this is really the message I want to share. Curiosity is something we have, and we have actually the capability to keep it and not lose it. So there's a couple of more examples I want to show about work I did before. So there was actually a request from a company to design a clamping tool, an ice axe. And uh, this particular tool was supposed to be used in certain extremes, temperatures and heights, and have to be lightweight, and have to be resistant to impact, and so on. And of course, at the time, the big inspiration was the woodpecker. So this is an animal, no bigger than, I don't know, 10 inches, one and a half pound of weight. But he had the capability to hit wood at 25 hits per second with no headache. <laughs> and have also interesting capability of moving his body by changing his gravity center. So this idea was what inspired us to define this tool. More importantly, we follow nature principle, simple, structural, and fast, in a way that even the handle happens to create a tool that was the most amazing uh, and, and practical aspect of this tool. We also analyzed burst bags for the different functionalities and angles. We also went into the deeper analogy of how grips can be achieved. So we went to study sharks. And the sharks are incredible animals that are, aside of being you know, in environments where they require several senses and magnetisms and other things, their skin is made in a way that is actually hard and soft. So it's a higher grip surface density. So we use that principle to define this tool. At the end, what came out was actually a very pure, simple design that was actually, you know, in the time, is still one of the products that, you know, perceive as a value of simplicity. And to the right, there is actually a climber. His name is Pierre Tardivel, and he's actually, a, you know, an extremist. And yes, he's still alive, so <laughs> it's important to know. So another project that I have the possibility to work with was for Gillette. So I believe, and I hope that many of you use shavers in the morning, it's kind of men. And uh, it's an interesting fact. So the blades in your skin goes at a relative speed of 50 miles per hour 
the tip of the blade. So when you shave, and I invite you here to practice this, men use about 200 strokes every morning when you shave. So imagine what happens when you are close, metal with skin. So you need lubrication. So we got the inspiration for desert snakes. Desert snakes are animals that live in environments with environments, you know, temperatures about 140 degrees in certain cases. And uh, what they do is by their movement, they are capable to deliver oils through the skin, through the skins, that actually protect them against UV. So this particular uh, structure is actually capable to keep the animal alive. So we use that principle to develop this product that was actually at the tip of the blade and uh, that green strip that you see in every cartridge. So what happened is this extrusion product was capable to create, in touch with the water, lubrication capabilities. So what is important in what I'm trying to say here is curiosity is an innate capacity of humans. We are all always connected. There is a reality in how we are part of the environment. We need and we must use these principles in terms of actually help protect the environment and actually move into the next step of our future. When you see, again, animals like these, I invite you to open your curiosity and think about the next spacecraft or anything that can be, because the functionality of these animals are amazing and in front of us. So this is my talk and this is my message. Thank you very much. <laughs>